Hello friends, hope you're all okay, you're all enjoying your life and you're also enjoying watching my videos. Welcome back to Dr. Arshad Nadeem Awan ultrasound and radiology teaching videos. Today I'm going to discuss about the bone tumor that's a benign bone tumor and uh, it's osteoma. Osteoma is a slow growing benign bone tumor and uh, it usually involves the cortical part. Very rarely you will be able to see in the cancellous bone. It happens to be asymptomatic, there will be no symptoms, but uh, on the CT scan and on the x-rays, you will appreciate this mainly in the skull area and in the sinus, especially involving the frontal sinus, uh, ethmoidal sinus, very rarely in maxillary and sphenoidal sinus. Uh, so the main symptom sometimes, if it gets blocked, it may result into the mucosal or sometimes is CSF uh, rhinorrhea, it may be caused by the osteoma. On the x-rays and on CT, it will appear highly echogenic and uh, this echogenicity will be in the medullary cavity uh, and uh, as I mentioned that usually involve the paranasal sinuses, uh, especially the frontal sinuses on the x-rays you may come across with a very solid echogenic lesion. Uh, Sometimes it may involve the pelvis, uh, the, the spine region as well, uh, resulting into painful scoliosis, but very rarely. Uh, the main important point with the osteoma is it's usually related to the Gardner syndrome. In the Gardner syndrome, there will be multiple osteomas involving the long bones, involving the skull, involving the paranasal sinuses, but associated with the adenomatoid. Uh, polyposis. In the intestine, you will see multiple polyps uh, or you can call it as a carpet lesion. So there will be multiple carpet lesions in the intestine. So that in, including with the uh, multiple osteomas and multiple polyps, it will be called as a Gardner syndrome. How it will appear on the x-rays, how it will appear on the CT images. So let's start watching these images. Osteoma is a slow growing tumor and consisting of uh, predominantly cortical or even uh, less often cancellous bones. Uh, it represents a dysplastic development anomaly as uh, it's a slow growing tumor so it may not cause any serious difficulty and most of the time it remain asymptomatic. Uh, it depends upon the sites of the involvement. As being a slow growing tumor, it usually remains asymptomatic. Although it can affect uh, sinus drainages and uh, may lead to mucosal formation, uh, it can also cause a CSF rhinorrhea, or uh, in some cases, it may lead to pneumocephalus, or in few cases, it is also observed that it may lead to meningitis. So far its uh, location is concerned, uh, if it remains cortical so then a particular term uh, would be used that is called as ivory osteoma and it ivory osteoma commonly affecting the paranasal sinuses, frontal and ethmoidal are the main sinuses although sphenoid sinuses can also be involved. As far as uh, uh, its uh, involvement of the mandible, long bones and spine are concerned, uh, it's less likely to but still uh, it can involve uh, the spine area and long bone and causing backache. It is a skull radiograph in AP and uh, uh, lateral projections. Here you can appreciate an, a homogeneous, smooth, dense lesion, a well-defined and spherical margins involving the right-sided frontal sinus. So this is a typical ivory osteoma which involves the paranasal sinuses and that dense lesion can easily be picked up on the simple x-rays and on CT images. So this is the example of ivory osteoma. This is another image is a CT scan and on this CT scan slice you can appreciate a well defined dense uh, lesion, bony lesion uh, which is coming out from the left sided 
frontal sinusing uh, going downward and to some extent involving the lamina preparatia, uh, the medial wall of the orbital cavity. So this is uh, another example of the ivory osteoma. As I mentioned earlier that uh, this less often found within the medulla and the long bones here on this x-ray you can appreciate multiple osteomas involving the femur here you can appreciate these uh, white arrows are indicating uh, the multiple osteomas so mind you one thing that multiple osteoma is uh, along with the small polyps uh, multiple polyps in the colon is a feature of Gardner syndrome so this is one of the very important point in the Gardner syndrome is that there will be multiple osteoma associated uh, with the multiple uh, familial polyposis in this spine image you can appreciate again there is a, a osteoma which is involving the spinal area vertebral bodies and this may be the reason for causing the backache so sometime incidentally you can appreciate this osteomas this is the barium studies of the colon and here uh, you can appreciate small sessile polypoid lesions uh, multiple lesions involving the colon so this is actually the case of uh, Gardner syndrome so previous images which you have seen uh, if you just see all them together so it will explain that this what the Gard Gardner syndrome is you there must be multiple osteomas on the long bone there will be osteomas in the uh, frontal or ethmoidal sinuses or uh, there may be involvement of the uh, spinal region or vertebral body so this all together will be the presentation of the Gardner syndrome so Gardner syndrome is a syndrome where there is a multiple polyposis uh, in the colon region associated with extra uh, extra lesions uh, maybe osteomas or maybe epidermoid cyst and uh, maybe some other lesion in the stomach.